Okay, let me just do a little something on a very big topic of decimals. Now decimals I do go through in great depth in the story of exploding dots and how to convert general fractions into decimals. So really you should go to the exploding dot story at this URL to actually see the full story here. But let me give a little taste about decimal thinking and the story that we have about fractions and their basic arithmetic. So first of all, let me just talk about numbers in general. For example, if I write down a really big number like 2,273, actually, listen to what our, my English there. I actually said how we think, say, and visualize a number like this. I said 2,273. If I draw also like a, a base 10 chart, we're really using the notion of place values with ones and tens and hundreds and thousands. Oh, you keep going, I want 10,000, 100,000, millions and so forth. But I said two thousands, two of those. 200, I said two of those. 7T, that little TY in English is short for 10. So I really do mean seven of these and three. So there's how we visualize the number 2,273 exactly as we say it. Literally 2,207 tens and three. Beautiful. Um, but the English language is a little bit weird. Let me point out something. So if I visualize a number like 1200, now listen to what I just said. I said 1200, I said this, 1200. But we write this. We write 1200 and no tens and no zeros. So actually we write something different because in this place value chart, we know that 10 dots in one box really correspond to one dot one place the over. For example, we say, 10 hundreds, you don't need them because 10 hundreds is really the same as 1,000. So just please do 1,000 instead. Oh, which we did. 1,200 and no tens, no, hundred, no, no units. Great. So English is a little bit loose. It will sometimes allow you to have more than 10 dots in a box. So I might say it, but what we write in, in our mathematics is actually, no, no, don't have more than 10 dots in a box because 10 hundreds is really the same as 1,000. In the same way, 10 of these, 10 tens, don't do 10 tens, they're really the same as 1 100. And 10 of these, don't do 10 ones, because 10 ones is really the same as 1 10. That's why I like this notation. 10 in any box is really the same as 1 1 place to the left. Bingo. So that's how we think about place value for our ordinary counting numbers. Great. But there's something interesting to do here. I mean, everything here right now is pretty lopsided. Everything's going off to the left. It's irresistible to wonder about putting more places off to the right as well. So the question is, what could they be valued? What could their values be? Well, if we're playing this 10-1 game, where 10 of these is the same as one of those, 10 of these is the same as one of those, 10 of these is the same as one of those, then the same token, 10 of these should be the same as one of those. 10 of whatever this is, is the same as one one, is one. Oh, each of these must be one tenth. Ten tenths makes one. Beautiful. Same token, ten of one of these things are, makes one of those. What are they? They must be hundredths because ten one hundredths, whoops, ten one hundredths, if I'm using my mechanics of fractions is ten over a hundred, whoops, ten times one, ten times ten, that's actually one tenth. Yes, it is one tenth. Ten of these makes one of those. So on. We've now discovered places off to the right. Bingo. We've got the high powers of 10 and we've got the fractional, uh, we've got the powers of one tenth going off this way. Beautiful. In fact, people separate these two boxes with a point and they call them a, they call this a decimal point, at least in the system of tenness, because deci is the prefix for 10 in Latin, just like December is the 10th month of the year. Have you noticed something weird about the months of the year there? Anyhow, decimal point for deci. Bingo. So we've now discovered ways to write numbers as decimals. For example, 0 0.3 means none of these, none of those, and three of those, please. Oh, it must be actually uh, three tenths. It's three tenths. Um, 0 0.32 would be three of these and two of those. So that is literally three tenths again plus two one hundredths. Great. But let me point out something interesting. People often say, no, 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 James, you read this as 32 one hundredths. And actually, think about it. I'm not sure if that's equal, because that's a different quantity. Let me draw a picture. This, I mean, there's a picture of three tenths and two hundredths. Now let me draw a picture of 32 one hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And an extra two. 32 hundredths is that picture which does look different from three tenths and two one hundredths, except 
we know 10 of these, kaboom, is the same as one of those. 10 of these, kaboom, is the same as one of those. And 10 of these, kaboom, is the same as one of those. Oh, actually, it was the same as 3 tenths and 2 one hundredths. Yes, that equals is valid. So there's a little annoyance. People might, might read fractions in um, different ways, might read this as 32 hundredths, though it's technically written as 3 tenths and 2 one hundredths. People might read this as 41 thousandths, though it really is 4 one hundredths and 1 one thousandth. So to keep that in your mind. You also notice I did something strange there. Some people like to write the beginning zeros. There's no dots there. They actually like to write no dots there. Other people prefer not to write anything in front of the decimal point. So that's a style thing. So I don't know what your style is, but both styles are fine. Mathematics doesn't care. If I've got nothing there, it means I've got no dots there. If I actually literally write zero there, it still means I've got no dots there. It means the same thing mathematically. All right, so that's a very brief introduction to decimals. They really are fractions, and they turn out to be the fractions in terms of denominators 10, Denominators 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. Beautiful. Now, in this whirlwind little introduction to decimals, let me now start doing some arithmetic with decimals to see how my brain thinks about them in this fraction story of ours. So, for example, um, well, let's do this one. Let's do something like 2.73 plus 1.885. Now, in my brain, this is really, we're in a, a decimal machine. So I've got all these places, duh, 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 boxes. I've got the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, and so on. And I'm saying 2.73. Two of those, seven tenths, and three. Please add one, one, okay? Please add eight tenths. Please add eight hundredths, and please add five once. Beautiful. So I can see I really do have three ones. I really do have uh, 8, 8, 7, I really have 15 tenths, I really have 11 ten hundredths, and I have 5. The answer is 3.15115. But I just did 3.15115. There it is. Beautiful. Except people don't like more than 10 dots in a box, so I can fix it up by doing the following. Because I know 10 of these, there's 8, another 2. 10 of these, kaboom, is really the same as one of those. So I can fix this up and now make this 4. Uh, five got left behind. I've still got 11, still got five. Oh, except 10 of these. 10 of these, kaboom, is really the same as one of these, an extra dot there. So I'll make that now. Four is the same, six, one, five. So most people do this by going right to left and doing these things called carrying. I was just doing all the carrying. I just left my carrying to the end, and that's totally fine. So that's how you do some basic um, addition with, uh, with decimals. Uh, let me try, let me try a nasty one. Let's try subtraction. 0 0.05 take away 0 0.006. Okay, well this is gonna be fun. Uh, let's try that. Du -du 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 -du. Um, okay, first of all, those that know me know I don't believe in subtraction. To me, subtraction is the addition of the opposite. So this is really 0 0.05 plus the opposite of 0 0.006. So I've got 0 0.05, that's five of these. One, two, three, four, five, plus, um, the opposite of this, the opposite is six thousandths. So I've got an anti thousandth, another anti thousandth, another anti thousandth, another anti. Well, I'll do, I did open circles in the previous video. Open circle, open circle, open circle, open circle, open circle, open circle. They're my opposites. All right, so the answer I can actually see right now the answer is 0 0.05 negative 6. Bingo. Bingo. Most people don't like negative numbers in a decimal place. Okay, I mean, mathematically, that's fine. It's actually what's really going on. That is correct. Except it's now a style thing. How can I actually get rid of this, all these negative quantities in that thousandth place? And this takes an inspired moment. And an exploding dot story, if you've, been, if you've been following that, we say, well, James, we know any dot here really was 10 dots over here. Why don't you just now un undo that, unexplode it? One dot there is really the same as 10 dots here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So think of this now as 0. Uh, 0, 4, and I've got the negative 6, and I've got the 10 all in there. Except a dot and a, an anti-dot, they annihilate each other. So that's 1 and negative 1, nothing. 1 and negative 1, poof, poof, disappear, 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 and disappear. So actually, 10 and negative 6 together left 4 behind. The answer is 0 0.044. There, I thought my way through subtraction. Love it, that's great. Actually, while I'm at it, I might as well do everything with those two particular decimals. I added them, I subtracted them. Let me now multiply them. 
<laughs> okay, whoa, speed, speed video this time. Now, multiplication in the exploding dot story is a little bit awkward, and you can do it, you can make it work, except I might just go back to something simpler. So this is the fraction story after all, because I do realize this is really five one hundredths times six one thousandths. And I went through a lot of work to figure out how to multiply fractions earlier, so I might as well just use it right now. Multiply the numerators, 30, over the denominators multiply together, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's the hard part, how many zeros? Um, multiply by a tenth, multiply by a tenth doesn't change the fraction. This is really 3 over t uh, 3, 3, 4, 3 over 10,000, it must be 0 point, uh, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, point zero 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 three. Bingo. In fact, I suggest if you actually really are multiplying fraction, uh, decimals, maybe rewrite them as fractions and make your life easier and work your way through that. Actually, that's, that's the best way to do this, multiplying decimals. And actually, I do the same advice for, in some sense, for dividing decimals. Dividing decimals. If I divide these things, I'm really thinking of the fraction 0 uh, 0.05 over 0 0.006. I don't like weird numerators and denominators. What could I do to make those numerators and denominators much friendlier? Well, I could actually multiply this by, well, I'm going to multiply by a thousand. Multiply by a thousand. Oh, oh. Because we learn in school, if you multiply decimals by 10, it shifts the decimal point. Oh, I should talk about that. Shift the decimal point? Is that what's really going on? Okay, end of this video, I'll talk about what, what happens when you multiply by 10 or 100 or 1,000. But, assuming we know that stuff, if this gets multiplied by 1,000, the bottom line turns out to be 6. You multiply this by 1,000, this, this turns out to be 50. So actually, this is really the fraction 50 over 6. Which then, I can actually make it a little bit simpler. That's really uh, times a half times a half. That's really 25 over 3, which is really uh, 8 and 1 third. I'm going really fast right now. I'm assuming I'm very familiar with fractions. I've done this many times in my life. Eight and a third. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so eight and a third. Great. Um, though, if someone gave me the question in decimals, they're probably expecting an answer in decimals as well. So, you know, I can get at my calculator and just actually type in 50 divided by 6 and see what the answer is. Um, or you can do the exploding dot story. And actually, in the exploding dot story, I do show how to convert a fraction to a decimal. It's a long story. I'm not going to do it here, but um, I, I, I'll tell you right now, it turns out to be 8.33333, and you're there for a very long time. That goes on forever. All right, bingo. But my point is, my real point is, if you're ever going to multiply and divide decimals, it's actually much easier to go back to the fraction thinking. That's my strong advice for that work. Adding and subtracting decimals, I just do it like you add and subtract ordinary numbers. All right, bingo. But there's more playing by 10 business. All right, final, final piece of business for this speed crazy video. If I did something like 2.134 times 10, I remember as a child saying, if you're multiplying by 10, just shift the decimal point. And I could never, well, first of all, I never understood why. And secondly, I could never remember, do I shift it to the left or do I shift it to the right? So if I'm if multiplying, does it go one way or the other? Um, for starters, for starters, uh, my decimal point should be low. For starters, this is two and some stuff. So if I multiply by 10, I should get 20 and some stuff. So I guess it's gonna be shifting to the right. The answer must be 21.34. Right, so my intuition says I spent the answer in the 20s, therefore I can see which way I should shift that decimal point. But why? Why does the decimal point shift? Well, let me go back and draw a picture of that 10-1 machine. So what I've really got here is 2.134. I've got two units, one tenth, three hundredths, and four thousandths. All right, great. Now I'm just saying, now increase everything by a factor of 10. Make this tenfold. So you have two units, now I have 20 of them. So having one tenth, now I have 10 of them. So having three hundredths, now I have 30 of them. So having four thousandths, now I have 40 of them. Oh, except people don't like more than 10 dots in a box. So 10 here would explode, kaboom. 10 here would explode here. There's two groups of 10 here. Each of those groups of 10 is the same as a dot here. That's really the same as two dots there. In fact, 21s really is the same as two tens. Uh, 10 dots here, kaboom, would make a dot there. 10 tenths really is the same as one. Three groups of 10, 10 become one of these, 10 become one of these, 10 becomes one of these, I now have three of those. In fact, 30 one hundredths really is three tenths. And 10 become one, 10 become one, 10 become one, 10 become one, because 40 one thousandths is really the same as four one hundredths. So yes, the answer truly is two one point three four. And actually, you know what? That decimal point didn't move at all. 
What really seemed to move is actually the digits seemed to shift around the decimal point. I would say if you're going to say things move, maybe the, the digits are the things that are moving. You don't shift the decimal point, you shift the digits, it turns out. Oh, that's kind of cool. And if you want to multiply by 100, 134 times 100, my advice is think of this as 2134 times 10, which we just did, and then times another 10. So I'll actually shift those digits not once, but twice. Or, in what we're saying in the school world, I guess the decimal point moves two places. <laughs> cool stuff. All right, I'll stop there. I think I spoke really fast in that video. Hopefully you caught on and all is okay. And let's keep going with our story.